Un, protams, ka ļoti svarīgi neapmaldīties šai milzu piedāvājumu, kas šobrīd ir ļoti daudz izdevnīts, ļoti daudz žanru, jo nu, visā šajā te informācijas milzīgajā būzmā ir arī ne tikai zelta grauta, ir arī sēnalas, un, un, un tas, ir, tas ir tas uzdevums, kā to, kā lai tas mums izdodas. Un es domāju, ka mūsu pilsētā ir ļoti labi, ir tas palīdz, tās ir bibliotekas, tā ir Alstu Fungura ar, ar, ar savu komāmi. Tā ir mūsu rakstnieks un tūkotāja māja, tā ir Andra ar savu komandu. Es biju vēl izmantot iespējām vēlreiz pateikt viņiem šīm mūsu pašvaldības iestādēm. Paldies par to darbu, ko viņi veic, ko viņi veic. Lai jums izdodas atrast pareizās atbildes uz jautājumu, kas ir vislabākā grāmata. Šeit ir labi eksperts, es domāju, kā mēs Vilks, viņš ir iedies. Uzsums. Profesors Vilks, viens no tiem, kas var būt sniegs vislabāko atbildi šo jautājumu. Kā jūs ziniet, viņš ir savu sapni īstenojis, Nacionālā biblioteka ir uzcelta, tikko līdzīgi panākumi atzīmē mūsu kaimiņu lietuviešu, un droši vien, ka viņš par to ir pastāstīts. Lai konferencija veicas, paldies viņš! Jo, protams, mēs lasām ordināla literatūrā, bet 
ordināla literatūra, ordināla valodā, bet kā reiz arī sanāk tūpotās grāmatas. Un reti mēs redzam, ka, teiksim, vai tā būtu no amilvalodas tūpotā, ka tas tūpojums, redzams, ka viņš ir tūpots no amilvalodas. Bet tagad tomēr arī šodien jāsaka, ka ir grāmatas, kurās ģem latviski lasi un vēl dzējus tūpojums ir vienkārši perfekts un fantastiski. Un tu nevar pateikt, ka viņi ir tūpot no Amiņu vai citām valodām. Šobrīd es arī var iznākt lasīt grāmatu par Afganistānu, lasēni tūkstoši sauļu mirdzums, es vienkārši ar abrīmu tūpotāju šo valodu ir daudz kā tas arī. Vēl viena dimensija – grāmatu un pilsēna. Tās ir atkal manas subjektīvās izjūtas, bet tomēr augsto pilsē kaut kā veids ir grāmatas lasīšana. Jo, iepriekš strādājot Rīgā, tā kā laika bija vairāk brīvā laika, bet kaut kā man bija pārākās tāds piecas gadus, kad neiznāk grāmatas lasīšana. Esot šeit, Varbūt ir daudz daudz vairāk, laika ir daudz daudz mazāk, bet tomēr pusstundu, 45 minūtes ik dienu iznāk veltīt grāmatas lasīšanai. Tā kā es domāju, ka tas arī šīs te augstskolas atmosfēra un pilsētas atmosfēra arī veicina lasīšanai. Noveigumā es novēlētu tiešām, lai visiem būtu interesanti, arī aktīvas diskusijas, un noteikti atkal viss gaidīsim pēc diviem gadiem nākamajā Ventspils paralēlē, un tā tad visiem ir ražani veiksnīgs šīs divas dienas konferences. Paldies! Tas, ko mēs 
varētu nosaukt arī par menedžeriem. Un kā Latvijā patiesībā šobrīd arī ļoti trūkst, un mēs visi, kas strādājam šai nozarē, ļoti, ļoti izjūtam. Jo vēl pirms vairākiem gadiem, kad man mēdz studēja Kultūras akadēmijā, viņa bija vienīgā, kur savu maģistru darbu rakstīja par literatūras menedžmentu. Jā, teātriem ir menedžments, kīno arī ir, mūzikai arī, protams, ir literatūra ir menedžments. Un tad, kad bija rakstīt par literāriem aģentiem, viņai pat bija grūti atrast vadītāju, jo īsti nevarēja saprast, par ko, par ko, kāpēc literatūrai vēl arī grāmatas raksta, nu, tad ko tad vairāk. Un pajautāju, kā ir šogad, domā, un izrādījās, ka patiesībā nekas arī nav mainījies, bet mums ir ārkārtīgi svarīgi šos cilvēkus atrast, meklēt, Jo bez viņiem patiesībā ne jau tomēr nekas nenotiek. Jo tikai dažas no visām šīm simtām sarkstītajām grāmatām tiešām kļūst iemīļots un populārs. Bet arī daudzām no tām sākums nemaz nav bijis glūts. Ne jau uzreiz pieņēma un bija sajūsmā par vēju un līdzi. Ne jau uzreiz visiem patika Harijs Potters. Nesakaidīja tos arī šīs grāmatas ar aplausēm, un kuram gan ienāca prātā, ka viss pasauli ir noelgojusies pēc vampīriem, pirms bija publicēta krēsla. Izrādās, mums visiem ir ļoti vajadzīgi vampīri, tā kā mēs to zinām. Bet lūk kādā tomēr tas ienāca prātā, ka mēs tos vampīrus gribam. Un lūk šos cilvēkus, kuriem ir šī smalkā izjūta, kuri redz, kuru grāmatu mēs varētu gribēt vai kuru mēs varētu pat uzspiest lasītājiem, ka viņam tā noteikti būtu jālasa, kuram ir arī talants par to pārliecināt citus. Būtu tādu cilvēku mums pietrūkst, jo viņam ir jābūt gan māksiniekam veselē ar ļoti smalu intuīciju un arī ar diezgan dzelžēm loģiku un menedžmentu, lai tiktu galā ar šo nebūtu nevieklo tautu, ko sauc par raksniekiem. Un arī Latvijā ar mūsu lasīšanas tradīcijām mums šķiet grāmatai, ko tad mēs taču pēc grāmatā mēs daudz atceramies, mēs stāvējām rindās, mēs tās meklējām, mums tās pārdevā zem lētes var teikt kā kādu īpašu lietu, ko mēs nevaram dabūt, jaunā paudzē to, protams, vairs neatceras, ka kā tas ir. Bet tāpēc arī, man liekas, vēl ir diezgan dzīve tā doma, ka mēs tikai uzrakstīsim, un viss notiek, un grāmata jau ir aizgājusi. Bet mainās pasauli, mainās grāmatas vieta tajā, un mums ir ārkārtīgi svarīgi saprast, kā mēs tam visam dzīvojam līdzi, un tāpēc mēs meklējam cilvēkus, kur strādā šai nozarē, kaut kādā veidā rada iespējas grāmatām atnāk pie mums. Un kā tas notiks, vai mēs to ieraudzīsim šo grāmatas liktē? Es ļoti ceru, ka šodien, jā, kā ar cisnīgi iesaku dzīvot jums līdzi šai konferencē. Paldies! Paldies, Andrīs, par jauku uzrunu. Es gribētu braukt tikai dažus organizātorus, kas mēdz tūkojumam kā tad pirmais kanāls, kas izmanto tūkošanu, ir Angliju valodā. Trešais kanāls ir Latviešu valodā, ja kādam ir pēc tā vajadzība. Tad es jau gribētu arī pastāstīt, ka pirmo četru konferenču materiālu tika izdot arī atsevišķā krājumā. Pirms diviem gadiem, tā kā tiem var iepazīties arī raksturveidā. Neskatoties to, ka viņi ir publicēti arī Ventspils bibliotekas mājas lapā un pieejam, Un tieši tāpat tiks publicēt arī šīs konferences materiāli, un iespējams jau, ka pēc diviem gadiem būs arī krājums, kur būs piektās un sestās konferences materiāli. Bet tagad mums ir jāpāriet pie praktiskās darbības, pie mūsu ziņojumiem. Pirmajā šajā konferences daļā mums ir pārdzēti četri ziņojumi ar pauzi, vidū desmit minūšu pauzi, kas ir paredzēta diskusijā. Tāpēc varbūt arī savus jautājumus, tad mēs paturām prātā līdz šai diskusijai un šim te panelēm noslēdzoties ir paredzēta arī garā diskusija, kuras laikā tad arī varēsiet uzdot savus jautājumus un debatēt par problēmām, kad būs radušās jums. Bet šobrīd es gribētu dot 
vārdu pirmajām mūsu ziņotājām, kas ir Paulo Pereira no Portugales, kas ir organizācijas tāros direktors un literārais aģents. Tā ir organizācija, kas nodarbojās ar stratēģiju izstrādi grāmatu izdevējiem, to mārketīgu un komunikāciju konsultācijas sniedz arī izdevējiem. Tā kā lūdzu, Paulo, jums vērts. Online. 
No TV show dedicated exclusively to books and reading. E-books amount to less than 0.01% of book sales. A lack lacking network of dedicated bookstores, less than 500 across the whole country, where only about 80 or 90 have significant sales numbers. The network of local and school libraries is still in development. Book prices are very high when one considers available income. A novel may cost as much as 16 euros in a country where minimum wage is around 500 euros and renting a studio apartment in Lisbon can cost as much as 450 to 800 euros per month. An unbalanced division of income connected to book distribution means that 60% of the price of a book goes to distribution, 10% to the author, and the remaining 30% have to cover the entire publishing costs of an average print run of 1,500 copies. Less than 1% of the government's budget is aimed at culture as a whole. Less than 220 million euros will only a small part of that go to the book sector. Although the Portuguese language is spoken by over 250 million people and it is and it's the third most used on Facebook, a significant part of the speakers is concentrated in countries with low literacy levels. Only 56% of the population of Mozambique is literate, just over 70 of the population in Angola. The country's precarious economy currently limits our official participation in literary events. Literary events typically don't charge admission, which makes them harder to sustain economically and financially. It is extremely difficult for an author to live slowly off income or to enter his craft, as authors are seldom paid to take part in readings, talks or events. Even though Portuguese writers are often invited to participate in festivals and fairs throughout the world, it's, it's extremely difficult for the Portuguese government to give travel grants. But well, not everything is bad. <laughs> so it's important uh, to highlight a few aspects. The Portuguese state has three initiatives for several years which should, should be highlighted. One, an institute supporting books and reading, which has created a healthy public and school library network. It has also launched an ambitious translation grant program for Portuguese speaking authors. Let me emphasize Portuguese speaking, not Portuguese authors, seeing as Portugal still gives grants to translations of works by leading authors from our former colonies. Authors such as José Eduardo Man Booker Award nominee, or the Akut, a name currently more often associated with the novel, benefit from grants given by the Portuguese government. Two, initiatives by the Camões Institute associated to the Portuguese language in which, in collaboration with Portuguese embassies, creates an interesting dynamic in terms of cultural activity in its regions. Three, the organization of book fairs and literary events in the four colonies bringing to these places a veritable embassy of writers and vice versa. In other authors, authors from Angola, Mozambique and Cape Verde are known and recognized in Portugal. Still within the internationalization of the Portuguese speaking authors, one must not forget the Portuguese presence in international fairs. For instance, Frankfurt 1997, Bologna 2012, Bogotá International Book Fair in 2013. I have the honor to lead the mission and all the cultural programming, managing architecture, design and communication. It was four months with intense work and a small budget, usually. Other participations in this fair were about 5 million euros. Portugal didn't have more than 700,000 euros. As I said, necessity breeds ingenuity and Portugal is quite good Admit at making omelets with no eggs. As a product of this experience, over 30 books by Portuguese authors were translated that year, and since that, 
our agency book office alone has closed as many contracts. Apart from the diagnosis, I promised treatment. And that is what I intend to focus on for the next few minutes. Considering all this somehow, somehow, quite, somehow, sorry, considering all these somewhat negative aspects of our market, how do we overcome those hurdles as agents and event organizers? The answer is one you may have already figured out, with creativity. In our, comp in our company, we create events that endeavor to build new audiences, stirring to action a range of institutions, such as schools and training providers, but also through literally a composure, catering to institutions without usually distance from books and reading, prisons, daycare centers, hospitals, homes for the underprivileged, elderly and young. We try to bring both writers and players from other creative industries, music, film, etc., closer to readers in order to broaden and diversify our audiences. <coughs> Associating ourselves with institutes of language and culture, Cervantes, Goethe, the Italian Institute for Culture, the British Council, etc., having them supporting our initiatives. This, is, this experience, as every event organizers, allow us to consolidate the image of Portuguese authors to boost sales, shortening the distance between books and that. As we'll see further on, it is very important to create a brand, an author, an author brand, which afterwards can be exported as a, on an international level. Please excuse me for referring to authors as brands. Sometimes this still shocks cultural actors, at least in Portugal. I say brands when speaking about authors, as I do when I refer to books as products. Because that's what they are, a product. Reading as a cultural act only exists when we are before a book and we read it. Until then, its concept and strategy in terms of concept, price, communication and distribution is greatly ruled by the same guidelines of any other industry although evidently respecting the specificity of the product of the product in question. Is there any question to see Marcus create an idea, a concept, a brand of what Latin American literature was? That the letter had been wanting to sketch a type of limelight, much like Sandra before her, created a very strong brand that seduced readers? As an agent, there are some aspects that I'd like to discuss. Without putting, uh, uh, without putting aside traditional tools and methods, producing catalogs, attending book fairs as agents, we try to use a set of more unusual tools and approaches in what has become a somewhat stabilized trade. An irreprehensible graphic image because what is functional should be elegant, and it takes as much effort to make something ugly as it does to make it beautiful, so we'd rather make it that way. A constantly updated website with our author's bio and bibliographical multilingual information, Portuguese, English, French and Spanish, and where we also regularly report their activities, public appearances, awards, and others. An app for both EOS and Android with authors, videos, yeah, bibliographies, news, samples, etc. That I am aware of. I believe we're the only agency with an app, at least that I know. Creating bilingual websites dedicated to individual authors where we can access data such as biographies, works, extracts, etc. These have a strong video component as well in lieu of the internet tendencies where video gets more and more attention. I would like to show you. This author is a full screws, one of full screws. I'm going to talk about, about him a little more, but of course he's a Renaissance man because he writes, he illustrates, he plays in a band, he directs movies, he makes beer, makes his own cheese, and <laughs> he 
this is a small video of the fonts. Here's the one who's singing. All these videos you can see on this web page that we created. His dog, Shane. He lives in Amandes, in the south of Portugal. In this video, Gilbert talks about music, not literature. If you want to know about literature, you have the website where it's posting all the videos. I can't tell you that it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Yes, you have an idea of the kind of tools you use. I must tell you that nowadays we have videos of all our authors uh, talking about their books. And so when I'm really, really, really tired at book fairs, I just put the video and he presents his own book. It's better for me. Uh, as you may know, uh, in a book fair like Frankfurt, we have 30 minutes. Uh, every 30 minutes we have a different meeting. At 9 I can be with someone from Latvia, at 9.30 with some, someone from Spain, at 10 from France, etc. And we have to speak in different languages, different contexts, and it's really, really good. So, like a burnout, 12 who want to go back home. Uh, it's, so, it's good to have uh, this, these tools as well. Uh, besides, they seduce the other side because they see that, that we work the authors in a different way. Uh, but I must tell you that it's a, a good excuse to have two minutes relief on a, on a meeting, having the author himself presenting uh, the book. Uh, here, as you can see, this is a video from his website, and he only talks about music. But if you go to his website, you'll find the phones present, presenting his own books. No, This is the website, afonsclusion.com, you have a Portuguese and English version, and you can see all the things that I'm showing here, you can see at home. Let's continue. Um, other things that we do. We uh, are helping book characters come to life, giving them personalized business cards. Jagdans is an inspector, is a character, and so we created a website which is jaiantans.bookers.com I don't know if you can see it here which is this one it's, it's not a website about the author, Francisco Xavier, it's about the character it, they, he writes novels, prime novels and so we wrote, uh, we, we created a website where we present the character you have a Portuguese and English version, let's go to the English version and then, if you open here, you'll see who is Jean Femme, his affinities, people, words, places, receipts. Yeah, we actually have one. Here's. Because he's a, a very specific character who makes his own food. He likes to read the Russians, uh, likes a good cigar. It's a very different detective. And we thought that more than create a website for the author, interesting is to create a website for the character. And we made, as you can see, business cards for Jack so that people can go to the website. This was a nine euros decision for 500 business cards, which I deliver uh, now, not just to friends, but in, a, in the professional context, in the, in the meeting. When I present the book or the author, I always give the card, the business card from Jan Camus, the character, so that people, if they have any problems and they need a private detective, they can come on Jan Camus. Then. Okay. Other tools that we use 
quite important, participating in European platforms without professional actors for the publishing sector. At the moment, we are part of the Literature Europe Live, coordinated by Literature Europe Last Frontiers. The platform um, assembles over a dozen European countries, such as Germany, Belgium, Spain, Malta, Norway, India. I don't know if I can tell about here at the moment. Where is India? <laughs> it was here. What you left? Good decision. Um, creating a network of sub-agents looking to overcome our lacking omnipresence, improving our business with precise experience and knowledge from each market. But well, apart from that, it's all about hard work and dedication. As you can see, we treat every author as a different case study, and for each author, we create a different strategy. That's completely uh, every author that enters in agents has his own plan, a two year plan, uh, most of the times. Uh, because every author needs different things. I'm going to explain all the things that we make at the agency so that you have an idea because our agency is a little bit different from normal military agencies. And the authors know that when they enter to book office, they'll have uh, a structure from book titles that makes other death um, as other areas that they can count on. So when we, in, 2000, in 2009, we decided to create the literary agency, many others have yet to have been approached by an agent, and some didn't really know what they did. Those who already had an agent, when they needed to talk to them, had to make international calls in the UK, Germany, or the United States. Today that has changed, and Portuguese authors can now reach out to an agency in their own country. I'll just uh, give you a quick overview of the 360 degree, degree services that we give to our authors. We take care of promotion. The promotion is done in the institutional level, author, and on the product level, you have seen two websites. One is aimed to the author as a whole, like a form suit, although you have all the references of the books in that website. And then you have um, a bookmarking strategy aimed to the product, to the books. Uh, Jean Range, that character, has about uh, nine novels and uh, one book with only with short stories. He's going to launch another one next year. Um, but it's a completely different strategy. Author and character. Author of books. Sometimes we work more as the, the author as a brand and sometimes we go for the, for the books. As you can imagine, when you're in a meeting, and most of the meetings in front of the Telling you Frankfurt, London, etc., uh, are quite exhausting. When you have an author which you present uh, saying that he makes his own beer, that he makes cheese, etc., this gives a, a relief in the, in the middle. So we have to seduce the other side, uh, not just business, 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 because if we work in books, that's because we like books, we like reading, we like stories. And it's good that I tell a story about an author, not just. Uh, a very uh, scientific way, and we try to explore that and try to always create a story about something. Um, I don't know if this story I'm going to tell you is uh, urban legend or is it true. I worked in advertising for several years before I, I, I created book tellers, and it's a, uh, there's a story that says that uh, the, creator, the creator of Guinness, the beer, when he decided to create the the, the company, he rented the place where Guinness was going to, um, to operate for 150 years because he was so sure of what uh, he was going to make that he rented for 150 years. I don't know if this is true, but I think it's a good story. I really don't know if it's true or, or not. And so the, the, the importance of telling stories when you are selling, when you are treating with authors, with books, is as much important as the book itself because um, the question is you have to uh, pay the, uh, you have to uh, deserve the attention of the people that's on the other side. We have a, a poet in Portugal uh, that died many years ago. That when he died, nobody knew nobody knew him. He had some texts and some magazines, etc. But he was only really discovered many years after that. He's called Fernando Sor. Uh, he's probably one of our greatest references. You have Camões, Antonio Vieira, 
essa de Queiroz, Fernando Pessoa, Saramago. Ok? Or not all. You make a short list of the, the five and you, you would have to include Fernando Pessoa. Then you would have a great discussion if you include him in the top three, but at least top five, probably everybody would tell me Fernando Pessoa. When he died, nobody knew who he was. He only published the magazine, so it wasn't the, the question of if he had called it, that was uh, in question. The main problem is that he didn't uh, have the, the chance or the intelligence to promote himself. He, he uh, would rather be drinking in Lisboa by the bars. Uh, he would spend the whole day drinking and writing. And so he created like, uh, I don't know. He's, uh, he has an arc with, uh, with papers, all written, that are about 30,000 uh, 30, papers, all written. Uh, and all the, the people that are still investigating his arc, they say that there are much more to know about. So for many years I, I presented him as a poet because we only knew Fernando so as a poet. Actually, most of his texts are in prose. That's a recent, recent 20 years discovery. Uh, but when he died, nobody knew who he was. I'm not saying that we have known souls all over the place. But the truth is that we have made the effort to get them known. Otherwise, they'll just be here, live, and we won't know who he was. Um, we have a recent case, like Roberto Bolaño from Chile, which happened more or less the same. People knew who was Roberto Bolaño, but he only exploded a few years after he died with the book 2666. I don't know if you know the book. It's five books in one. It's a great book. Uh, he had, but he had already written great books that were published. Uh, lots of texts published in magazines, but nobody knew who he was. And of course, uh, it wasn't just because of that, but he, he had an agent after his death called uh, Andrew Wiley. You might know, he's, like, he's not like the, the Chacal. He represents, if I was list, um, if I would ask you uh, names of international authors that you like, you probably mention some that are on Andrew Wilde's list. Uh, and he got to the, um, to to the work of Roberto Bolani and he managed to translate to everywhere you can imagine. So probably he's in Latin too. I think he is in Latin because I entered yesterday in the bookstore and there it was one of the books of Roberto Bolani, so I'm sure he's translated here in, in Latin. But let's get back just to give uh, I don't know how the time if I still have ten minutes. Two. Two minutes. <laughs> no, no words. Okay, so what, what do we do for the author's promotion, internationalization, I was telling you about, author's international schedule, national schedule, administrative work and building, March 21st, uh, they currently refer to Calcum Conference as the day of the present set reports, is always a happy day of the agency, editing and editorial services, canvassing work, uh, and obviously the contract negotiation. We try to give the best conditions to our authors, not just the royalties, but we try to see things as um, territories involved. For example, Spanish publishers try to include Latin America always, and we always try to separate Spain from Latin America. Um, we try to negotiate subsidiary rights, um, due date for authors' rights payment, that's very important. Commercial discount for the exhibition of the copies, etc., etc. So we try to make a, a close reading to the contracts and always trying to give the best conditions to, to our authors. Let me just give that to you guys. This is some of the translations from Alphonse Cruz, the author I was telling you about. Um, Let me just tell that when I uh, talked with, uh, with the phones to come to the agency, he was one of the founders of the agency. I told him, I won't promise you a single translation in the next two years. 
which is the thing you, you don't say to an author because you leave them in the room. But Alphonse is, uh, is a different guy. Uh, and he uh, said, okay, let's do it together. And nowadays he's in more than 25, 20 to 25 countries. Uh, it's quite translated. Because uh, I really, really believe, uh, I'm talking all, every time about Martin, but that's not forgetful thing. It's all about the, the, the talent that the author has. If he has not talent, we won't make our job. We can fool someone once, but I'm sure he won't fool twice. So, first time, it's possible that he make a translation, etc. But if it's, if it's not a good author, a good book, we won't sell more books from that author. Mm -hmm. Last case study, from the The Empire. Um, I'm going to read some. I'm going to lose my time. Uh, the Empire narrates a romance or even made a biography of a supposed music band that made to the very top charts. It's alright, of course. To include this exception, we set up a Facebook fan page. We bring up concert t shirts, simulated CD covers, concert tickets, set lists, and our items. We still weren't satisfied, so we asked our immediate friendly bottle of Portuguese figures to testify in our favor. We did short videos with them where they swore the band existed and that they were absolute fans, actually. Last but not the least, the agency is wherever the author wants it to be. There is no standard service, as I was telling you. For each author, there is a strategy. We define goals and measures for each of them. Any one of the book office authors is unique, and that cannot be ignored. Only in this way can we have their trust. And I can gladly say we have most of that. Thank you very much.